Let's do a little more work with integration by substitution. I've got some sort of similar looking integrals right here and I, what I want to do is go through and integrate each one of them and just see how they compare. So first of all dx over 1 plus x squared, okay that's pretty simple, that's just our inverse tangent integral itself. So that integrates as inverse tangent x plus c. So you might be tempted when you see this integral to think inverse tangent, but actually that's not the case. Let's try letting u be equal to 1 plus x squared, then du will be the derivative of this, which is 2x times dx. Well look, I've got x dx in the numerator, all I need is that 2, so I'm going to take that 2, put it in the numerator right there, and then to make up for it, I'm going to multiply the whole integral by its reciprocal 1 half. So really I've multiplied the integral by 1, I haven't changed its value, I know that these constant factors cross the integral symbol, so I'm all set. Alright, so what do we end up with here? Well this looks like 1 half the integral of du over u. Okay, well that's simple, I know how to integrate that, that's just, in, that's just logarithm of the absolute value of u plus c. So this will be 1 half natural log absolute value of u plus c, which would be 1 half natural log. Okay, u, remember, was 1 plus x squared, so 1 plus x squared plus c, and look, I can drop the absolute value symbols here because I know that 1 plus x squared is positive no matter what x is. The smallest it will ever be is 1, and for every number of x other than 0, it's going to be larger than that. So here I have the absolute values just so I make sure I don't take the log of a negative number, but in this case, since I know that this argument's always positive for any value of x, I just drop the absolute value. Okay, so I look at this now. What about x dx over square root of 1 plus x squared? Well, I'm going to make the same substitution here. That is, I'm going to still let u be equal to 1 plus x squared. du will be 2x dx. So again, all I need to do with this problem is put the 2 here in the numerator, multiply by its reciprocal out in front 1 half, and I've got 1 half the integral of du over square root u. So let's see what that looks like. The integral of du over square root u. Okay, well that's not going to integrate as a logarithm. Now I'm going to use my power rule for that one. So this will be 1 half the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. So instead of 1 over the square root of u, I'm going to write that as u to the negative 1 half. The 1 half gives you the square root and the negative sign, the reciprocal. Okay, so that's going to integrate as u to the negative 1 half plus 1. I add 1 to that exponent, what do I get? Positive 1 half divided by positive 1 half plus c. Looks pretty easy here, 1 half. Um, when I multiply by the reciprocal here, that's going to be 2 over 2. I just get 1. So I have my u, which was 1 plus x squared to the 1 half power, so square root plus c. And it turns out that is the antiderivative of this expression right here that we started with. So same substitution, but I integrate here a little differently. I use my exponent rule or my power rule right here for the integration, where in this case I use my logarithm rule. Okay, now how about this? x squared dx over 1 plus x squared. Well, if I let my, do my same substitution, 1 plus x squared, du is going to be 2x dx. I can't get that 2x dx here. I'm going to have to multiply by 2 over x to do that. To make up for that, I'm going to have to multiply by x over 2. I'm going to end up with an x there no matter what I do. But I'll tell you what, this turns out to be actually very easy to integrate if I just divide x squared by 1 plus x squared. So let's go to the next board and do that because I'm kind of out of room right here. All right, here's the problems that we just did right here. I've just kind of summarized them. This is inverse tangent. This integral, which is only different than this by the x in the numerator, comes out to be natural logarithm. This one that has a square root makes it different than this. That comes out to be just a square root. And here's the one that we couldn't use this substitution with. Here's the substitution that we used for both of these, right? And that substitution won't work there because it requires that we in insert some kind of variable factor. Before we do this problem, though, I want to do one thing. I, some people aren't sure when they see this that that came out all right. Let's check it. So if I say over here, y is equal to 1 plus x squared 
to the one half plus c, and I differentiate it, the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be, right, one half times the base, one plus x squared, times an exponent that's one less than that, one half minus one, which is negative one half, times, remember with the chain rule, I have to differ differentiate that base, so I get 2x plus the derivative of c, which is zero. Okay, so what do I have? The twos divide out right there. I have an x in the numerator over one plus x squared to the negative one half is one over square root of one plus x squared. And sure enough, that's the thing that I started with right here, so that is the antiderivative. Okay, so just a quick check. You could always take the answer that you get, differentiate it, and see if you get what you started with right here. All right, now down to this problem. What are we going to do? x squared dx over 1 plus x squared. This substitution that works so nicely with these two problems won't work. Let's use long division. I'm going to take 1 plus x squared and divide it into x squared. So instead of 1 plus x squared, I'm going to write x squared plus 1. Long division, if you remember this from algebra, okay, long division with polynomials. x squared goes into x squared once. I multiply 1 times x squared and get x squared. 1 times 1 is 1. I change the signs here and add. x squared plus negative x squared is 0. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. That tells me that x squared divided by 1 plus x squared is 1 plus a negative 1 that's still left to be divided by x squared plus 1. That tells me that I can rewrite my integral here as the integral of 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So there's my 1. This divides into this one time plus it has a remainder of negative 1 over x squared plus 1. So I end up with this. Okay, the integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals. I end up with just the integral of 1 dx minus the integral of dx over x squared plus 1. Very hard to do? No, not at all. The integral of 1 dx is x minus the integral of dx over x squared plus 1. That's what we did right here inverse tangent, x plus c. Comes out very nice. Not everything is going to come out nice like this when your substitution doesn't work. It's not always possible to divide the denominator into the numerator. All I want to point out here is this. Sometimes you'll run across situations where you can't find a substitution that will work or no substitution works. Occasionally you'll find a little algebraic trick that takes your integral and turns it into the sum or difference of a couple of other integrals, each of which is pretty easy to integrate. Okay, so just more problems on integration by substitution.